do kind of have these moments where I feel like it's cruel and, you know, to ask this of them, to do this every year. Maybe I'm hard on myself when I say that I'm not a rancher. I kind of have this image in my mind of what a rancher looks like. I guess I look at some of the other ranchers or families that ranch and that have been doing it for a long time. <laughs> I mean, I am. I guess my title is I'm a ranch manager, which is what I guess. I'm a rancher, yeah. I am envious of the fourth generation knowledge and just that attachment to a place that gives you this knowledge of, you know, how the environment works. There's this amazing rhythm on ranches. It's not just the seasons, but it's where the cattle are grazing, and I sense that is really ingrained in some of the old timers. I don't know that it's necessary, but I guess I'm a little envious of that. Steer. Did you have a hard time coming out? Mm. That's a kind of a big cat. Yeah, pretty, pretty good size. That says 85. Oh, no, but I, I don't, don't know that it weighs up much. Think so. Between 65 and 70, yeah. Huh. Mm. The first year that I worked here, we were in the bar. It was all guys, and I was the only girl standing in this group. And the one guy made some comment after I'd been talking for a minute that I must have the owners of this ranch fooled. You know, I must have talked my way into this position. And I've definitely gotten little jabs like that quite a bit. I wore a skirt one time to a meeting, and a guy said, you don't look very ranchy today. And I wanted to say, you. <laughs> There's like a look, and if you don't have that look, then you must not be legit. I grew up in downtown Salt Lake City. My dad is a total animal person, but my mom, like watching her pet, Pet, something is painful. Like, you feel sorry for the animal. <laughs> I think what got me here was definitely like this instinctual part of me that was drawn to being around animals and wanting to, to care for them. I've cried more over wanting a horse and wanting to be around horses, I think, than over anything in my entire life. You've bought a 22-foot Makati. 
and a pair of slobber straps and you want to put them on your snaffle bit. Take one end of the Makati, thread it through the left side, then to the right side, going from the inside to the outside. That gives you your rein and your tail and you can stick this around the saddle horn. Some people are surprised sometimes that, you know, I'm the boss of, you know, two men and, <laughs> you know, spend my days surrounded by, you know, most of the time all men and, you know, find myself kicking dirt in social situations that are very, very different to the ones that I experienced growing up. People wonder how I, you know, have been able to adjust. I like left and never went back, so I don't know. Yes, I'll forsake my husband dear, and I'll forsake my baby. I'll forsake my fine, fine home and go with you, Black Jack David. Go with you, Black Jack David. Last night she slept on a fine feather bed beside her husband and baby. Tonight she slept on the cold, cold ground beside her. Jack David, beside old Black Jack David. Like with the politics situation recently, I was just explaining to a friend a conversation that I had with a neighbor, and she was just like, I just can't even, I can't even relate to what that would be like to sit across the table from somebody like that. <laughs> Feel a sense of calm being out with the cows. I also regularly feel a large sense of responsibility. Sometimes my actions or my level of care is the difference between life and death for some of these new calves being born. One in particular, you know, the calf was really off to a rough start and sat up with it for most of the night had it in the bathtub and only for it to die in the morning and those those experiences are really hard death is always hard
All right, Mama, you gotta move. If she doesn't get out of here shortly, I'll probably go over. Because the baby can suffocate if she doesn't lick off the bag off of its face. Oh. <laughs> doesn't get old watching it and the resiliency that they have and their ability to just off instincts figure it out so quickly. At the end of the day, as much as I still am like, well, maybe I'm not a rancher yet, almost all the other ranches in this valley are cow-calf operations, so they're in the business of raising and selling calves, and I, I think I'm confident enough to say that I think I do it just as good, if not better, than a lot of them. So if you were to put a job description together <laughs> for a rancher, I think I would check most of the boxes successfully. As much as I'm comfortable here and I see myself here, I still sometimes am like, whoa, like I'm here. And, <laughs> you know, is this forever? 